Shalom to everyone who has come to this video. Recently, I received a message from someone who caught a part of one of my videos. They didn't watch the whole series from part one, but they caught a part of one of my videos and they sent me a message and they said, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, I, I watch your videos, I like your videos, but when I heard this about the Holy Spirit, or when I heard you say this, I knew it was wrong and I couldn't watch the video. And because I know this person is not a troll, I know that this person is sincere and that they've been taught a certain way their whole life. I empathize and I sympathize with that. And therefore I explained to them further. And then they said, okay, now I'm seeing where you're coming from. Now I'm understanding. And that's the catalyst for this video. So the person said to me that they couldn't finish watching the video when they heard me say that an angel made someone prophesy. And I was very clear that an angel, when someone is prophesying, oftentimes they don't even know what it is that they're even talking about per se, but it's a prophecy that's coming out of their mouth from the most high and it goes through the chain of command to Christ and to the angel and the angel puts the words in their mouth. Here in 2 Samuel chapter 12, for example, for those who are familiar with this chapter, we understand that Nathan is prophesying against David because David committed adultery with Uriah the Hittite's wife Bathsheba. And in verse 7 it says, And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And he's going to go on to prophesy about David's punishment for the sin that he committed. Question, where does the prophecy come from? In verse 7 again, it says, thus saith the Lord God of Israel. That's what it says right here. So Nathan is speaking the word of the Most High. Does that mean that the Most High spoke directly to Nathan? No, it does not. The Most High is the king and his delegates perform these tasks, send his messages to people. Here in Numbers chapter 22, it's talking about when Balak sent for Balaam to come and curse the children of Israel. It says here in verse 35, it says, and the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. So what is Balaam going to speak? It just told you, it said, the word that I shall speak unto thee. It said the angel of the most high said that, keep that in mind. Verse 36 says, and when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that, I sh that shall I speak. Why is he saying the Most High is going to put it in his mouth? Verse 35 said it was the angel of the Most High. It's because the word originally came from the Most High. I just want to make sure that's clear that you comprehend that. That it came from an angel. 
because it went through the protocol and we're going to go over the protocol again for those who maybe didn't see my previous videos maybe didn't understand it says in verse 39 and balaam went with balak and they came unto kerjath huzoth and balak offered oxen and sheep and sent to balaam and to the princes that were with him and it came to pass on the morrow that balak told balaam and brought him up into the high places of baal that thence he might see the utmost part of the people now this chapter is finished so in the next chapter and it says here and balaam said unto balak build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams and balak did as balaam had spoken and balak and balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram and balaam said unto balak stand by thy burnt offering and i will go peradventure the lord will come to meet me and whatsoever he showeth me i will tell thee and he went to a high place and god met with balaam and he said unto him i have prepared seven altars and i have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram and the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. So now Balaam has the words put in his mouth from the Most High that he's going to speak. Again, we already read in verse 35, it said, the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee that thou shalt speak so keep let's keep that in mind that balaam is speaking the word from the most high but it went through an angel the problem is that when you hear the bible say that someone spoke the word of the most high or that the spirit of the lord came upon them and they prophesied you don't understand that it doesn't mean the Most High came down himself or somehow he just made them do it himself. You don't understand that it's an angel that's his representative that's doing that. That's the problem. Here in Exodus chapter 3, for example, it says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And then check out verse two, it says, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Remember in verse two that it says, the angel of the Most High appeared unto Moses in the flame of fire out of the middle of the bush. Remember that it said it was an angel. Verse three, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt. Verse four, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him, out of the midst of the bush and said Moses Moses and he said here am I how did God or the Most High call unto Moses out of the middle of the bush how is that possible it just told you in verse 2 that it was an angel it's because the angel is speaking the words of the Most High it's relatively simple once you understand this Again, Revelation chapter one, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So to prophesy, to speak the future, that's what it means to show things that are going to come to pass in the future. It says, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ 
and of all things that he saw. John got it from an angel. We have to get that through our minds. And it came from the Father, as it says here in verse 1, and it went to Christ. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. And then he sent it and signified it by his angel to John. This is Revelation chapter 10, verse 9. It says, and I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. This is John speaking. It says, and he said unto me, take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. What does this book consist of? This book is the word from the most high. It says, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again. Who's compelling John to prophesy? The angel is. Who gave John the word to eat? The angel did. I just want to make sure that's understood. The person had a problem with what I said when I read these verses here in 1 Samuel chapter 19, where it says in verse 20, and Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time and they prophesied also. And then it goes on to say Saul himself prophesied. The person had a problem with me saying that the spirit of God being referred to here was an angel that's compelling these people to prophesy. That's what they had a problem with. Now, how can an angel, I've already explained in previous videos that there are numerous examples in the scriptures where spirit of God, spirit of the Lord, etc., refers to an angel. Because as it says here in Hebrews chapter one, verse 13, verse 14, it says, but to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? And that's a rhetorical question because the Most High never said that to an angel. He only said that to Christ. And in verse 14, it says, are they not all ministering spirits? sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That's what angels are, they're spirits. The problem is in our minds, because we're not learned as far as this is concerned, we don't understand that when we see spirit, oftentimes it's referring to an angel. We don't comprehend that. Now, how can an angel compel someone to prophesy or make someone prophesy? The same way that Satan, which is a fallen angel, was able to compel Judas to act. As it says here in verse three of Luke chapter 22, then entered Satan into Judas surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the 12. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains, how he might betray him unto them. Satan came into the mind of Judas, influenced his thoughts because Satan is a spirit. And that compelled Judas to go betray Christ. Here in John chapter 13, verse 26, it said, Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest do quickly. Once Satan entered into him, meaning his mind, then Christ said to Judas, that, that you're going to do, do it quickly. Because Satan is compelling him to do it. 
Here in Matthew chapter 12, starting at verse 43, speaking about evil spirits, it says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. So the evil spirit wants to return to the person that he came out of. It says, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So again, this spirit is wicked. These spirits are wicked. They're evil spirits. And it says they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Evil spirits are able to attach to people and influence their minds. That's what it's talking about when it says they're in a person. They're in their thoughts. Here in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 10, it says, And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God, so this evil spirit came from the Most High. It says, came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. So again, the evil spirit is compelling him to prophesy. And we read earlier about a different situation where the spirit of the Most High or the Holy Spirit compelled Saul to prophesy. One is on one side of the spectrum. The other is on the other side of the spectrum. One is a Holy Spirit, a holy angel. The other is what we would call an evil spirit or a demon. It says here, then went he also to Ramah. And it says, and the spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied. Here it's saying it's an evil spirit from the most high that caused him to prophesy. Spirits are able to make you prophesy. An evil spirit or a Holy Spirit. And a Holy Spirit is an angel in this context. Now, when it says the evil spirit was from the Most High, why is the evil spirit from the Most High? Job chapter 2, it says, Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Who are the sons of God referring to? It's talking about the spirits, it's talking about the angels. It says, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Why is Satan, a fallen angel, coming to present himself before the Lord? Well, this chapter will explain but it's so that he can get permission of what he can do. He can get his directions. Holy spirits or evil spirits have to obey the most high. It doesn't matter what the spirit is. They have to obey the most high. That's why it said the evil spirit was from God. Now here in first Kings chapter 22, it says, and the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. So the Most High is speaking to the spirits, saying, who's going to trick Ahab so that he can be killed at Ramoth Gilead? And they're coming up with different ideas. One said on this manner and another said on that manner. Verse 21. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. So again, spirits can refer to actual beings, actual entities. He said it stood before the Most High and said, I will do it. Verse 22, and the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets and he said talking about the most high thou shalt persuade him and prevail also go forth and do so 
And by the way, it's actually Christ that's sending the spirit, but it's coming from the most high. It's the same protocol. The protocol does not break. Verse 23. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put what? A lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoke evil concerning thee. The prophets are going to speak lies to fool Ahab, to beguile him so that he may go be killed. Where did these lies come from? Where did these words come from? They came from the lying spirit that was sent by the Most High through Christ. Just as here, it said the Spirit of God was on him, talking about Saul, and he prophesied. So that's showing you two different ends of the spectrum. In one case, it's the Spirit of the Most High, which is a Holy Spirit, the Holy Angel. And in the other case, it's a evil spirit. It's a lying spirit. And he's going to put words in their mouth so that they can prophesy what he wants them to say. These prophets are going to speak lies. Just as we read here, an evil spirit from the Most High came on Saul and he prophesied. By now you should understand because I've taken you through the steps to prove that an angel can compel someone to prophesy and an evil spirit can do the same. An evil spirit is on the other side of the spectrum, but they can compel someone to prophesy falsely as well. Here in Acts chapter two, it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Why is there a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind that's filling all of the house? Have you ever been at a, a metro train station and the train went past and you felt that wind, you heard that wind? Or have you ever been walking down the street, down the sidewalk and a bus passed you at a high rate of speed? You can feel and hear that whoosh. That's what's taking place here. The angel is entering the house where they're sitting. And then in verse three, it says, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Cloven meaning split in two. Tongues meaning languages. It means now they can speak more than one language. And in verse four, it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues or other languages as the spirit gave them utterance. The spirit is giving them the words. They're filled with the Holy Word of the Most High to speak. And again, it says the spirit gave them utterance. The angel is the one that's telling them what to speak, compelling them to speak.